Because we are going to deal with the topic related to human reproduction or animal reproduction, all right. So, just going to refresh a few basic concepts here, all right, which are going to be important when you are going to solve all the problems, fine. So, talking about reproduction, human beings as a subset of animals, all right, all of them show sexual uh, reproduction, all right. Now, reproduction is what? Essentially, reproduction is the production or, um, you know, when any animal or any organism gives rise to young ones of the same kind, okay? So, giving rise to young ones of the same kind is essentially what reproduction is all about, all right? Now, reproduction in terms of mechanism can be conveniently divided into two broad categories. You divide reproduction as sexual and asexual reproduction. Asexual and sexual reproduction. Now, asexual reproduction essentially evolves or revolves around process of production of a new organism without any gametogenesis, which means what? There is no formation of male and female gametes. Organism, there is any part of the organism or a small bud or an asexual spore is produced, which gives rise to an identical individual as compared to the parent cell, which means there is no genetic mixing, all right? Asexual reproduction uh, is conveniently also known as blastogenesis. You will find these terms used interchangeably for various different organisms. However, the key feature here remains that there is no sexual mixing, there is no genetic mixing and the organism is essentially a prototype clone of the original parent organism at whichever level you are talking about as long as it is asexual reproduction. All right. Now, talking about sexual reproduction essentially revolves around formation of two types of gametes. So, you have formation of the male and the female gametes, all right. Gametes are essentially haploid cells that are formed by the different dimorphic forms of an animal, all right. The male forms the male gamete, females form the female gamete. Later on, during the process of sexual reproduction, you will have a fertilization phase where both of these gametes are going to unite. Their DNA mixes, there is an interchange and you will now have giving rise to a completely new karyotypic phenomenon which is now going to get carried on into the offspring, alright. So, sexual reproduction essentially gives or allows for a window to make changes in the genetic makeup of the cell so that the offspring gets an entirely different shuffled set of genes which is coming from both the male and the female parent, alright. Now, let us bring the discussion to the human system since that is the focus of um, reproduction here is the human system. Let us talk about human di dimorphism. Dimorphism is a process where there are two different types of bodies that are produced, the male and the female body. Their characteristics in terms of physicality, in terms of sexuality are different and therefore, the kinds of gametes formed that are, are completely different. The male reproductive system in human beings, all right, talking about the male reproductive system here. The male reproductive system essentially consists of the following parts, all right. You begin with the testes. So, now in the reproductive system, remember you have primary and secondary organs, okay. A set of organs that is completely connected only to your reproductive capacity are known as the sexual organs. In that, you have a division primary and secondary. Primary organs are those organs which are essentially involved in A, gametogenesis, B, formation of those hormones that are controlling the sexual process, okay. Secondary organs are those organs which are only accessory in function. They are only secreting certain um, juices or certain chemicals or certain uh, enzymes which are aiding the process. They do not secrete any hormones and they do not have a direct role to play as far as gametogenesis is concerned. Therefore, they are known as secondary, all right. Now, talking about the major primary hormones or the primary reproductive system here, you begin with the testes, all right, which is present in the scrotal sac in terms of position, all right. Now, this is followed by the seminal vesicles, 
Seminal vesicles are those organs where your spermatogenesis takes place, which means formation of the male gamete, which is the sperm, okay, happens here. Now, in your seminal vesicles, you have what are also known as the seminal tubules. Talking about ultrastructure here, okay, the seminal tubules that are there, fine. Combined length of all of these seminiferous tubules or the seminal tubules is close to 200 to 400 meters. Okay. The seminal vesicle and the seminal tubule together are responsible for the formation of the sperms and for the holding of the sperms okay, during the process of or before the process of the actual fertilization act. All right. Now, your seminal vesicles are also known as the uterus masculinus. So, this is also known as the uterus masculinus. These are terms that you need to remember. Okay. Now, moving on to the next aspect here. You have the epididymis which also constitutes an important part. So, you have epididymis. Epididymis is for the holding of the sperms. Each specialized, specialized set of tissues or organs has got a very, very typical and a pivotal role to play. Okay. After that comes your vasa deferentia, which is a conducting system for your sperms. So, this is a conduction system. Sperms will be produced by spermatogenesis in the seminal vesicle, then they will be held in the tubules, all right, and then they will be conducted via the vasa deferentia down into the penis, which is the copulatory organ, okay. So, this is the last aspect here, which is the actual copulatory organ, which is involved in the actual act of fertilization that happens just before the gametogenesis phase, all right. The spermatozoa or the semen, okay, talking about the fluid secretion here now, accessory glands to the male reproductive system, these that we have talked about are the essential glands, accessory glands or helping glands are your Bartholins, your Cowpers, prostrate, accessory glands whose secretions are essential okay, for formation of what is known as the final fluid secretion which is your semen. Semen is a thick viscous fluid, whitish grey in colour fluid okay, that contains millions of sperm, contains close to about 100 million sperm. So, it contains millions of sperm which is nothing but the male gamete at the point of or at the time of your fertilization process. Okay? There is an ejaculation that happens and during that time millions of sperm are released all right, into the system fine and this is what is your fluid. Now, in during the time of ejaculation, the sperm sometimes may coagulate all right, because of the presence of certain chemicals and the decoagulation then happens with the help of what is known as plasmin. All right, just talking about the key features here. And as far as the female system is concerned, so this is essentially the male system in a snapshot. Female system, all right, is what is known as the, the typical feature is the ovary, all right, where you have production of, okay, so this is the female system that I am talking about now. You have the ovary which produces what is known as the ovum, all right. The ovum in the female reproductive system of the human being is the egg cell which is the female gamete, it is micro lecithial and it is typically does not have a centriole and it contains three polar bodies all right this is something that is a typical feature here because the centriole comes from the sperm and therefore the egg cannot reproduce or divide until and unless the centrioles are provided by the sperm which means it can divide only after the fertilization event all right so now what we are going to do is we are going to solve a couple of multiple choice questions all right now the format that we are going to use in this um, system 
is that there will be a question that is displayed along with four options okay as you can see here now i'm going to explain the answers to you i'm going to tell you the correct option and at the click of my mouse all right the option will get highlighted in a different color so that you will know what the answer is fine so now we are going to go for some simple multiple choice related questions which are related to human reproduction all right now the first question that i'm going to deal with here is a very simple question which says sperms are produced in the and you are given four options okay as you can see option a says seminiferous tubules option b says interstitial cells option c says vas deferens and option d says the prostate gland now out of this interstitial cells are a part of the anatomy of your testes which are not related to they are related to nutrition and not spermatogenesis vas deferens is a conduction system prostate gland is an accessory gland so that leaves us with seminiferous tubules okay which is the correct answer in this particular set okay moving on to the next question here uterus masculinus is uterus masculinus actually means the male uterus okay that's what this phrase means now the male uterus obviously has to be something where the spermatogenesis is actually occurring that is going to be the formation of the female the male gamete is going to be the place where you will have your masculinus uterus which means options given to you uterus anteriorly seminal vesicle of man the vagina and none of these all right so none of these options is not correct here uterus anteriorly which means that there is a difference or a change in positioning which does not apply to this answer vagina is a part of the female reproductive system which leaves us with the seminal vesicle of man which is the correct option in this case okay moving on human semen is a liquid at ejaculation but soon coagulates within about 15 minutes so that means after ejaculation that's what it means when it leaves the system it is going to coagulate which means it's going to make a semi solid gel like system and again it undergoes what is known as secondary liquefaction by the enzyme released by the prostate gland okay the name of this enzyme is now the prostate gland is an accessory gland let's look at the options here erepsin cathepsin lysin and plasmin okay erepsin and cathepsin are adhesion molecules which are not really applicable in this case all right lysin is something that is a general lytic enzyme which is not present in the secretions of the seminal fluid which leaves us with plasmin which is the correct option here all right now moving on to the next option the combined length of seminiferous tubules of man is about dash meters now combined length what it means is anatomical feature okay convoluted seminiferous tubules are present inside the testes now when you if you connect all of these tubules end to end what is the final dimension that you're going to get that's what your question is asking you all right you have options given here 100 to 200 meters 200 to 400 400 to 600 600 to 800 the correct option here being 200 to 400 meters which means if i end to end lay for a normal adult male okay if i end to end lay down all of the seminiferous tubules i'll get a combined length close to about 400 meters okay now moving on to the next question here one oogonium forms dash now this is a question related to the female reproductive system and the formation of the accessory molecules along with the ovule all right now what does this say one ovum plus three polar bodies one ovum plus one polar body one ovum without centrioles plus three polar bodies single ovum and no polar body now look at this okay question is slightly different here because there are two options which seem to be equally correct okay you have option a which says one ovum and three polar bodies is correct there is one ovum and three polar bodies all right second one is obviously wrong because one polar body is out of the question here we have three polar bodies therefore third is again out of the question the problem is ovum without centrioles and three polar bodies all right now in such a kind of an option be very careful when you are reading the options the first option that seems to be correct may not always be so you have to choose option 3 here c okay 
because it's very important to state that an ovum does not have centrioles okay which means the ovum cannot divide unless fertilization event is taking place and the centrioles in question are provided by the sperm so although the option one seems to be on the face of it correct all right there is a slight trick here so be sure that you're reading all the options carefully before you finally choose so in this case your option c is the correct one okay now moving on to questions from glands of the female reproductive male reproductive system okay the glands of the male reproductive system are okay now the glands means what you're talking about accessory organs which are not primary organs all right options that are given to you are prostate and seminal vesicles prostate bartholin and seminals seminal vesicles and bartholins prostate cowper's and seminal okay now in this case it is your option 3 because bartholins glands are another name okay for your seminals theek hai so prostate cowper's and seminals or seminal vesicles is your correct option in this case